enough they could get a big gold advantage. It seems a little weird to me though. Do you, do you see anything that makes it look good, guys? I actually thought that the bounty hunter was going to get taken by MVP Hot Six. I know it's one of those like they did pick, hindsight. You mean Phoenix, right? Or uh, Hot Six. Oh, you predicted the pick. Yeah, okay. I, I, I thought. I think it's one of those like hindsight. I, sh I feel like I should just shout these things. Like if I feel here, just like <laughs> bounty hunter, do <laughs> it, dude. <laughs> but I think that the thing is that MVP Phoenix and Hot Six have played against each other so many times that all the heroes that you would typically see are banned out and taken out of play, and so you, I feel like you have to kind of reach into the box and say, okay. Uh, they saw how much success that Bounty Hunter has had throughout the entire qualifiers. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not your first pick, I feel like it's one of those things where they look at it and say, that could actually really pay off. I'm not the biggest fan of Bounty Hunter against heroes that snowball like MVP Phoenix's lineup does, where they just begin to five-man at a certain phase and then they never stop. Then Bounty Hunter is completely worthless because you can't really get in close. Uh, but I think if the Bounty Hunter can get going in the first three or four levels, get some levels, and he can kind of just disrupt the flow of the game, then I feel like it's a worthy pick. For MVP Hot 6, I think they need something to be able to deal with the Drove Visage. Uh, I think they need a little bit better team fight that's a little bit more reliable, like a mid hero that can lock down, like an invoker that would go Quaswex, or even a hero that we don't see very often, but something like a Magnus. I just think that they need some sort of uh, hard lockdown. Because if you look at their team and yeah. what they're playing against, they're against a Queen of Pain, they're against a Drow Ranger, like you need, seconds. those are squishy heroes, but at the yeah. same time, you need a way to gap close yeah. that, well, I mean, your Bounty Hunter's not going to do Hot it. Hot 6 is so squishy, it feels like they need something to tank your, like, well, maybe PL as their fighting carry. That's pretty good, the AoE on Phoenix is a bit low, with the exception of Quap. so I, th I think this is an okay solution. Um, I, I think I like the Phoenix draft better, though. It looks a lot, like it rounds out a lot better. Lots yeah. of stuns. Their tri lane is I really was safe. Just about to say the same thing, and I can't believe I forgot about the Lion as the final pick. Gives them some. They have a lot of burst damage, a lot of control, and certainly a lot of push with the Drow Visage. For me personally, I feel that if Hot Six's lineup can get going early, like they can do something, for example, like snipe the courier mid or the bounty hunter can just pressure the off laner or do something like we saw pilot die do in the na qualifiers mm -hmm. then i feel like that lineup obviously it's a bounty hunter it's a yep. high risk high reward hero if you can get levels early and you can get one or two track kills it can make the difference in the next fight where you'll have usually at least one minor item over the other team but i feel like if this lineup Five doesn't get going early then i think they just get run over yep the, yeah. the first six eight missed me like as you're saying is going to be what decides almost for MVP Hot Six, whether they can find the early pressure from the bounty hunter, or if they just have a wandering, a lost running around the map bounty hunter who maybe even gets caught out by a dust or a sentry and goes down. All right. Well, with that, game number one of this best of five finals. At the end of this, we'll know which MVP squad will be right into the main event of TI, and which one will have to go through the wild card. Game number one about to get underway. Your casters, gods, and blitz, take it away. Well, thank you, Zaire. Here we go. It's game one of the best of five, as said, and this is the start for these two South Korean teams to make their stay as to getting a direct place in the main event at the International. Before seeing the drafts and stuff, did you favor either of these two teams coming in to things Blitz? I really thought that MVP Phoenix was going to actually beat them in the upper bracket finals. I thought they were a more stable team, but from what I've seen, MVP Hot 6, they're just kind of willing to risk it all, it feels like. Like the type of players that they are, especially as high mechanical skill, uh, maybe not the best controlled aggression, but I feel like, in terms of uh, actual skill ceiling, one of the highest teams in the scene. And I'm just so glad that... I, I'm a little bit biased because I'm Korean and I live there. But I'm really glad that uh, both MVP teams are going to be able to make it. Yep. Well, great early vision from Jarek Scouts at most of the Phoenix heroes here in the, the top side of the map. And will be a top bounty room going the way for QO on the mid lane. And the meanwhile, on the bottom begins. lane, it will be the Lena, I imagine, picking it up for Worthy MP. So Lena versus Queen of Pain mid matchup, slightly Lena favored, or what should we be looking to see there? I think it's slightly Lena favored, but Queen of Pain, if this makes sense, Queen of Pain has better potential to kill Lena than Lena does to kill the Queen of Pain. Because unless you really severely mess up as the Queen of Pain, you should always have to blink up. Yes, maybe you get zoned out by the Dragon Slave, but you shouldn't die. That's like the only thing that you really have to avoid in this lane. Do not die. And Jarex can gank you, but I think what they're actually hoping for is that Kyo decides to go for the dagger in level 1, and actually, oh, yeah. right, see, he actually just waited to skill. Yep. 
Smart play. And this is where, where I saw the bounty hunter pick up. I was like, sometimes you see it against like the Shadow Fiend type mids, the Lena's mid, because there's a lot more gank potential there, but a Queen of Pain can always have blink up. Courier Snipe in mid lane. Oh dear, Jerax. Well, you we talked about the Courier Snipe for Hot Six, and they've got one. Cure looking to punish. Blinks forward with the Shadow Strike, but there's another invis in two seconds for Jerax, and he'll be just fine. I feel like that's a tilt move oh. by QO as well, going for that. Uh, because the odds of you getting the kill are quite low, I feel. Yeah, the sentry ward's there, but I think Jerex has some idea of it. And the other thing too is that QO just wastes a lot of his mana and a lot of his time. And that's what we were talking about, right? Is that we discussed before this game, if he gets the courier snipe off, then I feel like it immediately pays off. Because this matchup is Lena favored as is. Yeah. The Queen of Pain just can't stand up to the amount of uh, harass you're going to take from the Dragon Slave. Well, that's worrisome. Kyo did get his Tangos out on the Courier, but still going to be very tough for him where he won't be able to bring out his bottle as early, early as he'd like to. And from there, Jarek's now rotating bottom lane. He's all over the place. It's going to be catching up March here, who has a Surge available, but with the Bounty Hunter extra bit of damage here, March going to run south, and he's going to TP, but I don't think he will get a chance to use it. He's going to hold on to it and just accept his fate. He picks up the kill, as that's first blood as well. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about before the draft, is if Jerex is able to do what he's doing right now, is he's pressuring the offlaner, which I really like the bounty hunter to do, right? We saw Pilot die kind of have that uh, rotation pattern where he would go to the mid lane, mess with him as much as he can, and then just go to your own offlane and kind of lull the Darkseer into a false sense of security and say, okay, uh, he's probably not going to be able to do anything. They can't kill me if I just play safe, and then he comes in, gets a few... Uh, extra XP and then once he can get to like that level 2, level 3 yep. range, I feel like he can start to uh, pressure the other lanes. Shuriken's just such like it does so much damage at early levels, even just with one or two points after the changes, so makes this roaming bounty hunter even more potent as run into March here at the bottom lane, not really a trade he can win against the Iron Shell, although he's going to keep on taking it from the high ground, comes Disruptor, glimpse back and that surge is now over, March could be in some trouble, Jerex getting low himself, they're gonna fight it out, Jerex not dead and disrupted from the high ground, will be able to bring down March! That's a second kill on the offlane darkness here, great play from Jerex on the bounty hunter as well as the disruptor moving in as well. That was perfect timing by Heen, and the type of space game they played, Jerex just kept bringing March over and over, right? It's It kind of felt like he was playing a, a little bit too risky there but if you actually think about it he was just trying to drag march a little bit closer to the cliff so that he could keep getting those right clicks off on him and that was just a wonderful outplay and that's that's your offlaner back so much obviously if you're watching the game you can tell two deaths on the offlaner isn't great but that kind of stuff snowballs and that's the offlane trap i feel where you see an opportunity to kill a support and you over commit for it i never think that's worth it i think that you should play for the farm game at worst, go to the jungle, because right now what you just did is you gave solo experience to both the Bounty Hunter and the uh, Disruptor, and you just gave gold to them without having to rotate the carry. Yep. Now Jarek's at top. He has been everywhere on the map so far. So that's poking at KP. TP comes in from Disruptor. They want to go for kills. They drop the Tombstone as well. KP gets glimpsed back under the tower, under the Tombstone. That's one kill going the way of Hot Six, and they want more. They want nuts, and it looks like they're going to get him. Sunbe right clicking away, and Jarek gets himself another kill for his team. Oh, boy. The thing's just falling apart here. Yeah, and that's a four minute killing spree. And in this mid lane, QO uh, does manage to blink away. And that's what I'm talking about is that it's going to be really yeah. hard for MP to be able to kill him. But at this point, with how the lanes have gone, you don't need him to. And I, the, what I really like about Hot Six's style right now is that they're actively pressuring a hero that they understand is really weak in the early game and making it difficult for the Drow to get to that snowball start. And all the Undying has to do is survive and wait for Jerex to be able to come in and pressure him. Because if your hero only has like 560 yep. HP, one decay, it doesn't really matter what level the bounty is. As long as he's level 2 with one level of the slow, you're never going to be able to fight into that. And while Kyo hasn't died, he's first been forced back to Fountain to heal up once. Then he went into the jungle. Now he's going to the Fountain for a second time in five minutes. And so much of that coming down to that courier snipe earlier on. Yeah, and you're just seeing the ripple effect that Jerex has had. The more important thing as well is that if you force the mid laner back, yes, Kyo doesn't die, but you notice that he immediately TPs to this mid lane, and he has to be the hero, I feel, to rotate to help the other lanes to make things okay. But if you waste a TP for mid uh, to get back to farm when the lane is pressuring into your tower, then it makes it even more difficult. If Jerex decides to go top again, then there's going to be no Kyo there. Well, looking for a stun on Kyo, not going to land. It looked like... Hot Six did see Phoenix plant the Observer one on the high ground at mid lane, so they should be able to easily deward that. 
as they had their own observer ward for vision and Jerex in the mid has a sentry available will not use it for now looks like he has other ideas in mind maybe not spotting out the ward being planted yeah and he's just continuing oh, yeah. to be a nuisance and now they find the ward man this is so huge right now because with mvp style of play i feel like this just snowballs them even harder and i mean look at the lion right now he hasn't rotated at all uh, he's level two right now and Jerex, who's been all over the map is almost level four this is an unfortunate position to be in while the top kill score a bit misleading as this is four unanswered kills. There were two neutral suicides, I believe, coming out from what stick. Bottom lane for it now. For the kill on Mar gets him just at the last right click before the next went through and top lane. They're also getting aggressive. Go on KP. That's the second death for Drow Ranger. And Sherex will pay for this with his life. First kill. MVP get picked up and the bounty hunter, who's been a big problem here, but that's also here you don't mind losing every now and then he's giving you this huge leading advantage. 100% uh, sure, because what you're trading right there, the bounty prioritized farm all over, rotating on the map, and all you're doing is making your die even more active. And the compare of offlaners is just, you want to see what the other offlaner are doing, not so much how the enemy carrying, but at this point, the thing you kind of compare to the draw just because of how many times Jerex has been it in and he's been mom this is what uh, right okay. oh, as well I mean this you know, is just a bloodbath I know this is just squishy squishy but that was like insta 350 400 damage new <laughs> Shruken decay like pfft. he just kind of blew up I didn't really expect that and then at the same time the lion dies at bottom as well and so you're just not seeing anything go right for MVP Phoenix right now Completely snowballing here. Jerex, level four and a half, so no track online yet, which is the good news for Phoenix, but it's not really considering how much they've been giving up in the early game here. Oh, he was smoked up, and he's used the ability to be if you notice that, God. Yeah. So that's another thing that he's been able to rotate for that top lane. Imagine if he had been able to rotate for that top lane. There's been two times so far. Up goes the smoke. He went into the bounty hunter, and... Well, that's me. just a down and I'm gonna deep again. This is no more. Gonna look to gonna be a he throws a good that will die to the soul such an income strike from the secure has already committed the blink and just level one. He'll die for this one as Bounty Hunter picks up the kill. Jerax looking for a second on Nuts to get the glimpse back on Visage. Feb gonna die to the disruptor. Meanwhile, Nuts dead as oh, well. No. Oh man, that is just so much golden experience going the way of Hot Six here. Just the Lena kill, not worth it in the slightest. And on top of that, you notice that they had placed a ward in the mid lane, it got dewarded, and then they just placed another one in vision of that sentry before That's some tilt stuff. I, yeah, I really feel like this is just MVP Phoenix getting a little bit... Th maybe they're feeling the pressure, because even that mid move, right, where Kyo got his career sniped, I feel like he should have known that the bounty hunter was there, he could have checked that he had boots, and then he wastes most of his mana on him. I feel like this is less bad play and more just frustration. Well, they have somehow managed to get Visage up to level 6, which means Familiar's now online, but in comes MP with a double nuke combo, and Jerex sets it up, gets level 6 off of that kill, has track available, there's no Sonic Wave, that's the other bad thing for QO after that last fight, is it did put Sonic Wave on course, he's being slowed down, turn Dragon Slave stun as well, MP will get the kill for Jerex, but did pay for it with his life, meanwhile Jerex is not going to go to walk, he's going to kill MP, suicide kill the bounty hunter, now he, they're going to go into nuts here, it's nuts versus Sunbeam, zombies looking out a little bit, just one, another glimpse back, oops, pulls right into the field, and he is done for, as they lose the mills as well. It just feels like oh those things happen in mid, oh, and oh, you lost your bird. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, that's like a 60 to 80 seconds or so of familiars now. And it feels... Two minutes, okay, even better. I've been playing against Kyo for a really long time, and I kind of understand his mentality here. He feels he has to make something happen. He's one of those players where he feels like game relies on his performance a lot, and uh, that does make him play a lot better. But I feel like when he gets into the type of scenario where he loses a lot, you know, and uh, he kind of just gets aggravated by the amount of things that he's had to do differently, where he's had to TP to the lane constantly, where he's been forced out by the Lina, and then he goes for that aggressive dive. Like, yes, you got the Lina kill, but at the same time, you're just giving up more and more levels and farm to Jerax, who, to, I mean, he hasn't pulled a single time, right? Like, he's actually just been rotating nonstop around the map, and he's picked up drums at 10 minutes. I mean, he got, he got a try, his first track kill, or even maybe a second one, but he's gonna, this should be an easy kill on Nuts here. May not even need the support backup, although there is an Undying nearby. Another Shadow Walk forward. Nuts underneath the tower. <laughs> okay, easy kill. 
Yeah, when a support bounty hunter that. is doing this right now to one of your other supports, it's just nowhere on the map feels safe anymore. Like, he was just going for a pull relatively close to his tower. Well, QO didn't want to blink because he knew there was a glimpse back in. You mentioned QO feeling like he has to make something happen, and he's kind of continuing to try and do so, but it's backfiring. Yeah, and right now, I mean, we talked about it. If the laning phase, the first six to eight minutes goes well for uh, MVP Hot 6, then they can definitely build up an advantage, but they haven't even had a win for the first six minutes. I don't think minutes. anyone expected to go this well as they find their 18th kill in 11 minutes. This is starting to get kind of ugly for MVP Phoenix. Five of the top six net worth heroes all on the Radiant side. They haven't even pushed a single tower yet, but that's going to begin soon as they're pressuring bottom lane. They've been pressuring mid and top as well. And not much Phoenix can do. Dro's rotated just towards the Ancients and the jungle, feeling like no lane is safe. What, so. When you're in this position as well, where your Dro has to go to the jungle or the Ancients because she doesn't feel safe farming the top lane out, and March might even go down here again. Look, it's pulled back. Uh, Spike's coming into play on the outside as well. March looking to fight his way through this one. Iron Shell not up, and he's going to die to the PL, it looks like. PL gets low. Nuts with one more right click. The Soul Rip heals him up at the last second. Nuts is going to be a track kill for MVP, Hot 6, as Fora will make his way out of there as well. Queen of Pain gets the kill with the Sonic Wave, but may pay for this with her life, and a track kill on Queen of Pain for the PL. Even that is not really a good trade when there's track involved. Every single time that you're killing a support hero, most of the time you'll say, okay, it's only a level four or five lion, what's the big deal? But, I mean, look at his net worth, 714. Yeah, that doesn't give you the most, but every single track kill makes it kind of even. It's almost like you're killing a normal sized hero. Yeah. And it, it turns into a core. That's 200 extra gold for Bounty Hunter, 50 for every ally nearby. This is problematic. We checked at 10 minutes, and I made sure to make a mental note of this. Jerex had drums and regular boots, and two minutes later, just two minutes later, he's com fully completed his phase boots. Radiant on top of that, he's got 1k gold. Like, he could go any direction he wants at this point, and he would be okay with it. And I just feel like right now, MVP uh, Phoenix have to stop the nosebleed, and I mean, at bottom, <laughs> Febby goes down again. They can't really do anything about it, as they're just dying with impunity now, gods. This is getting ugly. Yeah, they're saying this is kind of unplayable, but if Sunbe is saying that, imagine what it's like for Phoenix right now. <laughs> Okay, so can we talk to management? I think they're actually in the both. They're both in the same location, so neither team is gonna call shenanigans or anything like that. Yeah, yeah it looks like it is the servers, not the location they're playing. I'm not sure if they realize that yet. So the admin saying here's the same spikes. We'll take a look at this replay here at bottom lane, where Forev goes in with the lads. This is. I mean, this was kind of a spiky fight, although I don't think the lag spikes necessarily affected the outcome too much per se. And so March is going to get uh, dropped the wall, but I mean, they just don't have the damage right now because the line is such a war low level because I feel if Warnuts is level 6 there, they get the kill on Phantom Lancer 100% assured. And maybe from a morale standpoint, it's worth it, but that's just another track kill and you have to hard commit the Queen of Pain as well to come in and throw down the ultimate. Yes, you get the kill, but you're not looking to trade one for one against a bounty hunter in any scenario, I feel. Now, even <coughs> even if you start killing off core heroes for support, it still doesn't feel like the the best trade from time to time. So, we'll see. Hot six. Now they're going to start claiming towers, and this is where they Phoenix are going to lose all sense of map control. Dyer's bottom tower yeah, is under more attack. than the fact that I feel uh, Phoenix are playing poorly, I just think that Dyer's this is Hot Six executing their strategy to perfection. Like a lot of people are going to look at this and say. Uh, MVP Phoenix played really bad, but I don't think that's the case here at all. Like I, I'm not really going to. Uh, criticize a lot of MVP Phoenix's choices. It just felt like uh, Hot Six were one step ahead of them in every scenario. And at top again. Well, they're going to go into KP. Here comes the rotation. Kuo blinks in. He's committed to this one. He blinks in underneath the tombstone of all places. Tracked up. This is going to be multiple track kills going the way of Hot Six. A third track comes out. Nuts gets caught out on the line. And oh boy. Things have really, well and truly, fallen apart. The sink is. That's, the ship is quickly sinking here. That's a 13... I I don't even know what to say. I'm just kind of reading off numbers here. But I just want people to understand the gravity of the situation. Is I mean, that's a 13-minute mech almost hood undying in the offlane that was against a straight-up tri-lane. 
And that, that was a strong tri lane as well. It was a triple ranged with a Visage and a Lion. Like, most heroes are going to struggle against that. And the fact that he's done as well as he has, um, I mean, you've got to give all the credit in the world right now to MVP Hot 6. And this mid, I mean, Kyo just blinks forward again. Is he going to get picked off for this? And I really I, work, That to is me is track. like, <clears throat> maybe they've just kind of thrown in the towel at this point almost. This is, yeah, it kind of feels like they're at the point where they're like, Okay, what are we actually meant to do? We're so far behind. Maybe this is how they get things started, though, is Ferev is the target. He does get hit by the tail end of the gust, but he's so tanky right now. Another track goes down. Jerex is getting hit. Zebby's dipping quite They're low. fighting on the tombstone again. They can't even find a kill for themselves. They're just throwing bodies at MVP Hot 6, and this almost, to me, looks like time to call oh, GG, no. and they will. Game 1, over and done with 14 and a half minutes, 30 kills. What a massacre. That's 30 kills in 14. I mean, you can just throw the raw numbers at people, and anybody that's following this tournament right now can kind of understand for themselves what the deficit felt like. This just kind of felt like a classic case of one team got the ball rolling early, and they just never let go of it. Like, they had so many things go right for them. QL loses his career. Then they go top. The beautiful rotation by both supports. The outplay at bottom from...